Can you imagine? Can you imagine just standing before the king?
I invite you now to bow your heads as we have a word of prayer. Father God, we come before your presence on this Sunday afternoon. And we come so looking for hope and looking for comfort. For we know that you are the God who weeps along with us. You are the God who knows and understands how we feel. And so, Father God, I pray for your comfort to be with us now. 
I pray for your Holy Spirit to draw near into our hearts. And as we mourn the loss of Willie, I pray that we may do so with hope, knowing that this is not the end, that we have the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. Yes, it hurts now. Yes, it is painful now. But you promise us that there will be joy on resurrection morning. And so your, may your spirit be with us now during this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm chapter 57, verses 1 through 3. Psalm 57, verses 1 through 3. The psalmist says, Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all these things for me. He shall send from heaven, and he shall save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Our reading from the New Testament is found in John chapter 14. Verses 1 through 7. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, if it, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go now to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, it means that I will come again and I will receive you unto myself so that where I am now, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. But Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we then know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Amen. At this time, we will have a musical selection from Dominique Alexander.
At this time, we will have a poem reading from Cordella Denise Malloy. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon, friends. I'm honored to read this poem. God's Garden. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He knew that you were suffering. He knew that you were in pain. He knew that you would never get well on earth again. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, peace be thine. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. Author unknown. Thank you. Thank you, Cordella. Willie James Malloy, known to family as Boom Boom and friends as Malloy, passed away on Friday, July 10, 2020. He was born on November 1st, 1938, to the late Frank and Beatrice Jesse Tyler Malloy, who died when he was only three years old. He was raised by his father's grandmother, Ozzy, until his great aunt Alma and uncle Charles Florence continued as his parents until they preceded him in death. As a Miami native, Willie completed his primary education at Dunbar Elementary and his secondary education at Booker T. Washington High School. Before his graduation at Booker T. Washington, he enlisted in the United States Army and completed his service in 1957 with an honorable discharge. After completing his secondary education, Willie attended Florida A&M University, and he began his career in logistics with his employment at American Bus Lines and as a truck driver for many years. On December 1st, 2001, he rededicated his heart to God and was baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist Church by Pastor Mike Miller and became a devoted member of the Jacksonville First Church. While he did not serve as a church officer, Willie was often heard ministering to his friends and others of Jesus Christ. In his free time, Willie enjoyed playing the saxophone and riding his motorcycle within the many associations he was a part of throughout his life. The Lazier Strokers, the Goldwing Road Riders Association of Miami, Florida, Chapter FL2E, and Chapter FL1X of Orange Park, Florida. He also enjoyed traveling with his wife, Louise Malloy, across the country where they visited many states and met many interesting people. Willie's life will forever be cherished by his loving wife of 50 years, Louise Mitchell Malloy. His three daughters, Glendora Hurst Clifford of Atlanta, Georgia, Marilyn Leslie Malloy of Miramar, Florida, and Capucine Reed of Ocala, Florida. His siblings, Sanella, Patty Malloy of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and his brother, Frank Irwin Brown, who preceded him in death. His aunts, Rose Artiz and Patricia Marrero. Willie will also be remembered by his eight grandchildren, Davian, Joshua, Eric, Brandon, Brianna, Brian, Zachary, and Paige 
Two great granddaughters, his niece, Cordella Denise Malloy Q. Frontis of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as well as a host of devoted nieces, nephews, siblings in law, cousins, and family members. At this time, we will have another musical selection by Byron Rowe.
but full of hope. And in its morning says, I know there is a better day and I shall reach that place someday. Pastor, officers and members of this established congregation, friends and family of Willie and Louise Malloy. God has honored us to be in the number a little while longer so that we can tell others who follow how good he has been to hear. I want to encourage you to be a subscriber of the Psalmist David's declaration I will magnify the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, come, let us magnify the Lord together. Life is not complete if there are not tears to go with his joy. And so I have learned over these minutes that I have been a shepherd to never ever deny the bereaving family their tears. Be free, let them flow. But just remember, what the apostle says, we do not sorrow as others who have no hope. I've chosen just a few remarks from the New Testament, from the book of First Peter. The chapter I reference is five. And these few comments, if you, in, if you give them a title, you can call them, You Are Not Alone. Father, take these words you give us and make them seeds in our hearts of hope. And may they bring fruition to the promise when Jesus declared he was the resurrection and the life. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Thank you for being our God. And thank you for being the giver, not only of life, but of eternal life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is an interesting scriptural pericope we massage this afternoon. I promise you that I will not be long. But I do want to ask you to take notice that the Apostle Peter is the spokesman. He matters in this setting because in the book of Acts, the 15th chapter, when the church convened in business session to decide its future, there showed up representatives of various factions of the church. There were the Judaizers who believed strongly in the Abrahamic code of circumcision and thought that anybody 
who had come into the church as a result of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost at the Feast of Pentecost should be circumcised and by so doing become a Jew. There arose in that convocation the Apostle Paul accompanied by Barnabas and some others who declared that the just should live by faith. And so they ultimately decided that they would administer the church in two modalities. Paul would bring the gospel as he knew and understood it to those who were of Gentile birth. And Peter and James and others would continue the gospel according to the Abrahamic birth. There comes a point in our lives where we must come to an understanding even when we don't have agreement. It is not the end of the world that we disagree. The end comes when we are unable to resolve the outcome of that disagreement. So now I move to Peter just to talk to those of you who are already in the faith. And I'm going to operate here on the assumption that you are traditionalist in your beliefs and therefore Peter for this occasion is your apostle. That being said, Peter speaks in 1 Peter 5 to the leaders of the church and encourages them as shepherds of the flock of God that they serve as overseers willingly, honestly, and eagerly. And remember that there is a chief shepherd. This matters to me because I believe that William Malloy was of that old school philosophy that old people were responsible for leadership. Peter, in subsequent verses, beginning at five, references the younger. In this case, he is not speaking about age, but he's talking about rank or position. Some of you are from the traditional South. So you know there was Big Mama, there was Mama, there was Little Mama. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There was a, an order. Little Mama can talk long as Mama didn't talk. But once Mama talked, Little Mama had to be quiet. And heaven help us all <clears throat> if Big Mama cleared her throat. Is that right? Now, some of you all might not remember that. You, you guys who came over from the West Indies, you know what I'm talking about. It is in this context that Peter is talking to the believers and suggesting that there has to be continuity among the people of God. So just because the 90-somethings and the 80-somethings and even some of the 70-somethings are leaving the stage, the 60-somethings and the 50-somethings and the 40-somethings are not excused from their responsibilities. You might not have been born in 1920-something or 1930-something 
or 1940 something. But at the end of the day, if we are the children of God, we have a responsibility to the will of God because he is not bound by time. Are you still following me yet? We are generational. God is eternal. So there is no big papa and papa and little papa. There's just God. There is just God. And when God speaks, he expects us to not only hear him, but expects us to listen to him. So here is what he says. You have an enemy. He has a roaring lion moves among you, seeking to devour you. I'm not concerned about the physical consumption of your flesh. I'm concerned that you lose sight of your hope. That virtue which keeps you in touch with the promise that says in a little while he that shall come will come and will not tarry. If you miss that then let me get a little bit more current. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. The promise made by the Messiah, the Son of God, to return to the people of God, I really need you to get this. Death is an interrupter. I said death is an interrupter. It's not a period. It's just a comma. When you see a comma in a sentence, you know something else of equal value is going to follow. Do you understand that? The deep have been abandoned. I rise today to tell you that you are not alone. Here is a covenant commitment that God makes in a tempter among you that would cause you to believe that death, the interrupter, is permanent. You need, according to scripture, to not let that get in your head. Resist him, Peter says. Steadfast in the truth, knowing that the sufferings that you experience are experienced by others in the brotherhood in this world. You are not alone. William Lord died on Friday a week. Friday passed, my son's father-in-law passed. It's interesting to me only because it's Friday. But here's the point. Death does not avoid us. But life that comes to us from God is forever present with us even when we know we have deceased. Let me see if I can say it like this. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Faith is the substance, Washington, of things hoped for. The substance, the tangibility. You can touch it, feel it, see it, taste it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not yet seen. That, that invisible, that, that that's out there in the ether. You can't see it. You can't touch it. So now notice the apparent contradiction. Faith is something you can get your arms around and faith at the same time is something you can't see, touch, or feel. How then do you remain faithful? 
I need to take you back to the experience of our foreparents. I will trust in the Lord till I die. That declaration was made because they knew who they were and whose they were. The Lord's our rock. Can I get a witness? In him we hide. Here comes a shelter in the time of storm. Oh, here's another rock of ages. Mm, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. The rock never ever moves. But God in his providential care creates a conviction that allows you to stand in that place. So when the howling winds of fear and guilt and doubt and despair and depression rush past you, you need not fear to be taken away. Mahalia Jackson, long time gone, but she used to say, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me in his hand. He's got everybody here in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. Now, if God then is for you, nobody can handle that. You are not alone. Willie had to go. He came to his expiration. But that does not mean that it's done. When Jesus received word that Lazarus was ill, he knew what the text message meant. Hurry up and come because if you hear, he won't die. Now, they didn't say that. They said, Lazarus is ill. We know that Jesus immediately detoured. He took his own good time to get down there. As a matter of fact, on his way, he stopped to have a conversation with Zacchaeus in a tree. One writer says that Jesus in his spirit knew that Zacchaeus needed him. And so Jesus placed himself by that tree so that Zacchaeus would have the opportunity to receive an invitation to his salvation. The point I'm trying to make to you is that just because Willie is resting doesn't mean Jesus abandoned you. He's handling some business because there are some others who need him too. And what he needs you to do is be patient and wait. I'll come back to that in just a moment before I sit down. When Martha heard that Christ was near, she dried her hands on her aprons and went out to scold him like big sisters do. Where were you? Didn't you get my text? You say, yeah, I got it. Then why you bother to come now? He's not only dead, he's already stinking. Jesus said you're not dead. Now, don't, don't, don't it just bother you? When you're looking at what you know to be truth and somebody look right back at you and tell you what you know to be truth ain't true. Pardon, pardon my grandma. When people look back at you and try to tell you that what you know isn't truth. I just want you to know I know how to say is and ain't. I just need you to know that. All right. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. You are not alone. 
There are others who are attending similar services or have attended them or will attend them. But there comes a moment when he will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. The old Negro said it'll be the great getting up morning. So here I'm back to it now, Isaiah 41.10, and I'm on my way to my seat. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard? That's God asking you, do you know who he is? Fear thou not. I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. And then in street language say, yeah. In Isaiah 43, he says, when the rivers run over you and the fires consume you, do not be troubled. I have redeemed you. I have ransomed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are not alone. really gonna miss you It's really gonna be different without you Time is gonna be hot and slow For the rest of my life I'm gonna be thinking about you Yes, I am. Time came when you had to go. I'll miss you, my buddy. I'll miss you, my friend. I promise my There's a higher power that we answer to And you heard him calling your name Really gonna miss you Everything about you, your smiling face is an opportunity 
for the soul of man to touch the soul of God. And as you bow your heads now, let's have a conversation heart to heart as God speaks to us. He stood in the midst of nothing, no form, no shape, no light, and declared, let there be light, and there was. Standing in water, he said, let there be dry ground, not just ground, but dry ground, and it was. And then he covered it with greenery and forests and filled it by putting birds in the air, fish in the sea, and beasts on the ground. And then formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. In this prayer, as our souls reach out to God to be touched by God, be reminded that he who took nothing and made something can give life again. So Father, I give you Louise and her children and their children and their children's children. And I ask that that which you began in Adam will continue in this family. Breathe on them the life of God, the help of God, the hope of God, the strength of God, and ultimately the salvation of God. Remind this family that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. There is nothing, God, that you cannot do. There is no need we might have that you cannot supply. So in the words of the gospel artist Fred Hammond, be a fence all around us ever. What you would have us to do and be what you would have us to be. For the family members, the sisters, the siblings, the nieces, the nephews, the friends, the spiritual sojourners, Remind us again who we are and whose we are. Because God, when you are for us, none can be against us. The evangelist sang it so well, I will get home someday. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy, I'll carry on. Until the day my eyes behold the city. Help us, Lord God, as we go through the days to come. To not let our eyes be cast on darkness, but on the sun of righteousness. Help us to look up and not look down. Help us to remember that Satan is a defeated enemy, not will be defeated, not might be defeated, but has been defeated. May we draw strength in that and be able to declare that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Thank you for being our God. 
Thank you for being our defender, our sword and shield, our wheel in the middle of a wheel. Thank you for being a righteous God. Save us when Jesus comes is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.